kind of go into the details of this, but we'll just go back to the main menu. Um, you can do a bunch of stuff with you know figuring out configuration and completion. Um, I think that what I'll say. Uh, and so and so there's a bunch of different other kind of things we can do here. So um, so there's a lot there. So that's kind of handy, I think. Right when you're starting off, it kind of gives you some some things to work with. Um, Okay, so then there's also another script that'll allow you to do a lot of stuff with like configuration uh, your, of your tab completion. Um, so, kind of gives us this verbose speech, and so we want to put it in, in, a, in the file that we normally have. So, there's a lot of stuff you can do with different completion, matching control. Um, so, there's the ability to do approximate completion, so you can, uh, um, you can have correction. There's different uh, parameters and globbing and everything like that, um, and you can also like get really detailed, you know, approximation and everything like that. So I'll say zero errors. There's all kind of different stuff. Okay. So anyway, so, so there's a huge amount of things you can do here. I'm not going to go into all of them, but so if you're interested in that, there's a lot of things you can do. Okay. So now. Okay, so this is how I normally have it. Um, so we're here. On this. I made a really long path name on purpose just to show uh, the power of variables here. Uh, <laughs> so let's see. I think I have a lot of okay, so so you've kind of seen some of the things we can do with um, just some some basic information. Oh shoot! One of the things that I wanted to show was what got generated when we um, created. The uh, when we use those sort when we use those scripts to um, write out things. So, let's see. so I'm thinking, what is? I'm just gonna ask stupid. Question. That's fine. What's what's if you did use globbing for instance for the flow computation, or your computation, type computation? What does that do? What does that mean? I don't even know what that means. Um, so I guess it's the ability to use like star and star star to kind of like instead of using find and other kind of tools, you can use different syntax within ZSH to um, or or Bash to um, kind of expand out. So so instead of like doing uh, grep dash r of something and then in in a directory, you could do grep something in star star slash star or something like that okay. to say so it kind of it'll expand out your um, is, is that it so uh, blobbing completion allows you to do something like you know what the last two so a lot of the times you're completing and you know what the first few characters in the file are right but if instead you know what the last few characters of the file name are you can do like cd a directory and then like star and then continue okay. and it'll try and match the stuff on either ends and use the blob in the middle and then the tab it will complete that to something. That it also works in the blobbing condition also works in that. Yes. Okay. And you just have turn on basically. So um, so <coughs> kind of an example So this is um, my ZSH file in my normal. So it's pretty long. There's a lot of different like stuff. So generally, it'll say, okay, here's a bunch of things that we installed via using these scripts. So, so it's kind of handy. Um, and I'll go through a bunch of other kind of things in, inside of here. What I typed here, ZSHC, that's just an alias that I have, um, just to open up. ZSH, uh, the, the configuration file inside of that. Um, thanks for asking that question. I appreciate that. I, like, uh, it's hard to kind of take a step outside and like really define something. I'm probably uh, the only person in the room who didn't know. It's helpful. 
it's not a kind of completion that we use very often. Yeah. It sounds I generally agree with that. And that and that's one of the kind of the things that I'd like to discuss at some point. It's just like, you know, there is so much stuff here and like you'd have to be an encyclopedia to memorize all this stuff, you know. So it's just like you gotta kinda take what it take from it what you can. It's like, alright, I use this on a daily basis, this is really helpful. And then there's other things that, you know, you might look up once and use it once, but otherwise you don't really use it. I have eight different servers that I like manage as part of my real job. Yeah. And they all have the same app installed in slightly different ways. And so like once you get to the specific app it all has the same file name. But I was just looking at it and that can be kind of useful because I can never remember the path to the app on the because some of them are running in Genex, others are running Tomcat and stuff like that, and it's all just different. So that would be kind of useful in figuring well, out that, what the crap is. Well, that a lot of it, yeah, I, I have a lot of use for that too because I just my client set my structure, it's usually the same general structure, but I got to drill down into different places of clients' files, like proposals, websites, stuff like that. So, is that blobbing if you um, say you start out with a client name, then could you actually? make it so that it skips even a couple directories if you're not exactly sure how deep it is and then put the ending directory. Right, so like in here if we want to change it into like DB migrate, this is like a Rails app that I just set up so we kind of only know the structure. So if you wanted to do that, I think you can do that. And then, so I'd imagine if you, you know, if you're several, several directories up, So it'll still kind of go to the same place. So that's kind of handy just for moving around a little bit quicker. Yeah. Um, if you know the... Uh, so as, as you get crazy like that, you need to be careful that you actually end up in here. Right, that is critical. <laughs> <laughs> that, just, uh, that just moved you like four directories in one direction. <laughs> right. So, so another thing here, we got two like very similar uh, names. I created like two database migrations like a few seconds apart. So they kind of look really similar. Um, so. Normally, you kind of have to like do like, all right, gvim something. Oh, okay, now I need to look at this and figure out which one of these do I actually want. You know, so another way to do it is saying, okay, I know that I have uh, h2 underscore in this one. I just press tab, and it'll go through and it'll like lock that up. So I, I find that really handy. Um, so. There are some there's some crazy settings that you can set that I think will allow you to do it. They are definitely not on by default. Right, and I th I don't think these are on by default either. So so and I, so I definitely think if you're using Bash, you should look at all these things if they interest you because I think they would be useful. If you so. use our common files and then our .emx file, we have it set up for you so you can basically type something that matches part of the file somewhere. And yeah, it that's really good. Bash. Let's try it. Cool. It's cd star star slash um star and a root rail, rails root directory and a point stick in the unit. Cool. Alright, well, that's good. Um, Sweet, I already love your presentation. <laughs> Great. <laughs> um, so, just kind of want to talk about some of the things that are available in ZSH as well as some of the things that are available in Bash. So, um, you can do aliases. Um, so, that's just a way of saying. I, I'll kind of I'll kind of describe all these as I go through. That is funny. Um, so, so here are just some variables. So a lot of times I'll set up um, some sort of variable. Um, so in, in your ZSHRC, you'll just say desk equals whatever this path is. And then you can actually use that really easily to say, OK, and then um, you know, CD minus to get back to where I just was. So uh, for, for in this case, actually, um, if you if you like say say I come to this folder that's like 20 levels deep right here a lot. So what I want to do is create a variable in my zshrc file to, you know, easily allow me to get there quickly. Otherwise I'm, you know, tabbing and trying to find all these different things. So I find that really handy. Um, and let's see. So and then I think bash bash has variables definitely, right? And bash also has just standard um, aliases, so you can say, you know, instead of typing gvim out, I just type g, and it opens up. Um, other kind of things like that. Uh, I think, you know, shortening your git commands is really useful. Um, I think I created a... Okay. So, so instead of git status, you type in just gs and stuff like that. 
So I use GLH, so that's get log, like one line, and then just do the top ten lines of that, so that kind of allows you to see the last few lines of, you know, what you committed. Um, so, um, so one of the things that I found useful as well is just do, they, they used to have command DOS to Unix, and I think they replaced that with some other thing in, in Ubuntu, so I aliased that. Like I said, the ZSHC is just opens up my configuration file. Um, I found this one really handy. Um, in ZSH at least, so if you just type minus, it'll take you to the previous directory. So that's a lot quicker maybe than typing CD minus, or do you using like pop D, push D to like change your directory stack. Um, so, so ZSH also has suffix aliases, so it allows you to say given this suffix on whatever thing I'm trying to open, or whatever thing I'm trying to access, I'll open it with this application. So currently if I do um, uh, so usually if I do H2 whatever, I guess I won't even complete here. Say te command not found test rb. So if instead I do alias dash srb equals vim or gvim. Then I do test rb to open that file in vim. So, so it's kind of useful. Um, another another kind of cool thing is if you want to maybe say open HTML files from the command line or open you know, something something wikipedia.org in Firefox, then you can do that by using suffix alias as well. Um, so that's, I, I don't think it's something you can do necessarily in Bash. So I thought that was kind of cool. Um, also global aliases, and I think this is really interesting. So global aliases, normal aliases will only happen if they're like at the very beginning of your statement, and I think global aliases can be used throughout your, um, throughout your line. So let's say you want to do <coughs> cd dot dot dot. So that'll uh, uh, might not have this configured anymore. Okay, let's do that. I think it's pretty good. Okay, so now I can do so. So this just CD up twice, basically. And there's a little bit slicker way that I can show in a minute. Um, another thing is like, say you you know you're grepping through and you grep for X uh, out of my whole application. So I'm going to get a bunch of stuff here. So then if I Control C that and I go and just push push L, which I have alias to um, pipe through less, then it'll go through and it'll you know that I can search for something like you know. Um, so that's kind of handy. Um, another thing is like, say you are executing some process and you expect to have a lot of errors. Instead of you know, piping errors through to dub, dub null, you can just put any at the end of the line. So you know, if I expected a lot of errors here, I would just do like that. So I'm not really sure what would happen if you did that, you know, or something. I guess. Okay. So I guess it's. I guess in this case, it's waiting for me to put something in. It's piping it through less or something. So, but anyway, so so you can kind of use it judiciously if you don't have a whole lot of files named L, capital L, or something like that. So, um, so in a, kind of the application for Ruby that I would see, since it's a Ruby user group, would be you know, say you have some things that you commonly use, like no RI include dependencies. Like this is probably really outdated, I'm sure, but um, this is something that I had at one point. And then you have like sudo gem install. So instead of typing sudo gem install every time, you just put SGI. So you can take something like this down to, you know, 10, 12 characters. So, um, so it, it's kind of like you got to think, all right, how many times am I going to possibly type this in my life? And is there some way that I can automate that, you know, by creating some, some configuration that I can remember later? Um, and it's easy, you know, to spend hours and hours doing this. I can either confirm or deny that I've done that. But, um, <laughs> you know, it's kind of like, 
I think you need to just kind of, let, let's say you have a really cool idea for something, like a lot of times it's important just to write it down and then later you can do it. Like don't let it interrupt your flow. Like so if you're like, oh okay, I'd really like to create some function that does this, like write it down and then look at it in a week when you're, when you're bored or something instead of, you know, having that interrupt your flow. Um, I found that to be helpful. Um, so just some more things you might commonly use, you know, so rate db migrate, just have three, three letters, you know, do that. Um, also spelling corrections of common commands that you might misspell, so instead of alias sl to ls and stuff like that, so if you're going really fast. Um, same thing, hero, to me is a lot easier to type than Heroku, just because that extra like ku is kind of strange. But um, Alright, so I got some more random tricks. So. I don't know if you guys have seen this cartoon, I think it's kind of amusing. <laughs> so if you mess around with a lot of uh, like Debian based stuff, I think, I don't know if Ubuntu is alone in this, but like, say you try to do apt, they'll say, oh, I can't do this, are you root? So then you realize, okay, I need to type sudo apt-get install zsh. So one way to do that is to you know, press up, go, the, go home, and you know, type in sudo. Another way is to do, so this will execute the last command with sudo in front, so so if you want to do that. So that's an, uh, just kind of a quick trick. Um, I think you can do that in bash as well. Um, um, another, sorry this is like information fire hose here of random uh, command line tricks. I think I'm getting close to being done. <laughs> it's good stuff. Yes. Fire hose. Yes. It's funny, like a year ago, and I actually at work, I said, I wish someone would write something for me to run the last command with sudo. <laughs> and everybody made fun of me. Why don't you just hit up home and type sudo? Yeah. Um, so another thing you can do is, like, uh, so say you created a file, and then you, you know, looked at it, and you're like, okay, or you, you, you checked some file and you say, okay, it doesn't have anything useful in there, so I don't want that file. Instead of, you know, up and doing that, you can do this, which will take, what is the first parameter of this, or what, what is the, what is everything after the command of this parameter, or of the previous line, um, and so you can just do that. So, so might be somewhat useful. I don't really use that one too much, but might be a cute trick. So, um, okay, so this one I think is really cool. Oops, shoot. Um, so instead of you uh, doing a global alias with a dot 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 or dot 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 or however many dots you want, you know, so you have to keep setting up these aliases in your zshd file, you can do a different function instead. which is this function, and um, I'll show you what that does. So I, I alias reload to source the zshd file, so now I can do this. So now what we can do is see migrate. So, so what I do is two, two dots, can you guys see that in the back? Uh, so I do two dots and then I do one more dot and it starts adding stuff. So, I don't know, I think it's kind of cool. So instead of having to keep typing dot dot slash dot dot slash dot dot slash, you just keep typing dots. Um, so, in this, one of the things I want to show is kind of in this directory, at version 1, version 2, if I go back here and I just type 2, it'll complete that directory as well, so that's kind of cool. Um, while we're on the subject, let's see, so, so, the path up here is version 1 or version 2. We're currently in version 2. So, let's see. So, this path all the way up to here, version 1, has also something, another something, demo app, db migrate. So, if we wanted to change maybe to the version 1, there's like a really cool trick you can use in ZSH that just says, so what it'll do is it'll replace all instances, or the first instance, I'm not sure which, of version 2 with version 1 in your path. Oh, uh, apparently I did not do that correctly. Let's see.
Okay, cool. So I didn't create the DB migrate directory earlier. So, so what I just did there was, and this is a kind of an esoteric thing as well, but it's the ability to quickly go up your directory hierarchy and find where I should be <coughs> changing into. So, um, <coughs> all right. So does that almost work like, I mean, how we would find a, you know, a, a method that just kind of goes up the, the parents and Basically. the first one that defines that's named that? Yeah. Yep. So. It'd be great for a topic of the product. Yeah, exactly. Right, if you especially if you the same um, you know directory structure or something, you're in the DB. Oh, okay, I remember there's a DB migrate of this other thing, so you switch CD in there, open that up in your in your editor or something, and then you copy whatever you need to copy from there. I agree. So um, let's see. Yeah, you're working on a plugin at the same time you're working on an app. Yeah. Um, so, and this is kind of another, so ZSH has the concept of the module, so not everything is in the core, it's the same thing as like a Rails plugin, right? So it has a bunch of things that you can load or ask to load to, it's almost like an include or a library or something like that, so you can just say ZMod load, whatever you want to load. So in, in this case, there's, a, there's one that's called ZMV, which uh, is ZSH move, so you can do some things with like wildcards and change all the, all the things of one type to another and do all this other random stuff. Um, I don't really use this 100%, you know, like, it would take me a lot, a lot of times more time to figure out how to use it than it would be useful, but I think it, it's kind of one of those things, you keep using it, you'll eventually get it, so. So it's kind of something useful they might find. Um, there's, there's stuff for, like, printing out time and everything like that, there's minus for that. Um, so this is getting a little bit into the uh, globbing qualifiers, and I think Google Docs ate my spacing. I really hate when this happens. But, so in Bash, <laughs> what you might do is maybe... You might find all files, all all things of type file, in um, in the current under the current directory, and then change them to be executable. Or what you can do is instead type change change all the files to be executable that match this um, specification. So in this case, we're looking recursively at all files. That this princess dot princess is. Um, look at files. You could be princess slash princess, and that would be all directories and that sort of thing. So there's there's a bunch of different things that you can do. And you know, for example, I you know found some random thing that uh, print all the files modified in the last hour. So this will this will give you that. So if you for some reason have to know all the files that are la you know modified in the last hour, there's some way to do that. Um, same thing. Uh, sorry that the spacing is terrible, but print. All the files that uh, are greater than one megabyte in size. I don't know why you want to do this, but you could. Um, so one last thing I want to show was um, so ZSH has a way to do like inline help. So let's say you're trying to SSH into something and you're not sure what the parameters are. You know it's like Anthony at something.com, but you're not sure if there's like a you know something you want to put here. But you've already typed all this stuff. So normally what I would do is, you know, control C and do man SSH. So there's another way to do that. If you press escape and then H, it'll pull up your, the, the man page for whatever command you're trying to execute. So that can be really handy. So I can just realize, oh, okay, I wanted to specify a configuration file. So then I just do, you know, F config.txt or something. So that can be handy. Let's say you're doing git, you know, git add something and you can't remember what the parameters are. Normally if you type escape h it'll only do git because that's all it knows about. I think there's a way to, there, there has to be a way to change that, but so what, what I would do instead would be to add a dash here and then go like that. So that you can remember, okay, I, I want to add, you know, interactive or something like that. So. Um, so, I, so for me, that's that's very useful, just because you don't have to go back and type man. So it kind of keeps you in, keeps you in the flow of what you're doing. Um, so there's several different things out there that kind of integrate ZSH with some other things. Sorry that it's so ZSH centric, but that's kind of what I know more of. Um, I think before this presentation, I didn't really know how to bash, and so my my biggest fear was I was gonna be like, man, ZSH is so cool, you can only do it in this, and uh, then everybody's gonna be like, oh, bash did it, you know, bash does it already. So and I'd be like, hmm. So, <laughs> um, 
So just kind of, you know, whet your appetite or get you excited. There's some cool integration you can do with, um, you know, Git. And I believe you can do this in Bash as well. Um, just to kind of show you some, you can use a lot of cool colors. And um, right here, the exclamation point is saying there's some file that we don't know what that means. Um, or that we don't know what it is. And I think uh, it's probably this vim ssh file. Um, and then the question mark means there's something that is not committed yet. So. Um, there's another one, this is kind of, uh, this is really cool in my opinion. So he's using some mercurial stuff up here and then down here there's ZSH integration. Um, just kind of, I really like the colors and the color scheme and the palette and whatnot. And over here there's uh, the battery status. So when it's green, uh, the guy has 50% or greater battery. When it's yellow, it's like 25% um, or more. And when it's red, it means he's down to, you know, 10% or something like that. So. I guess this person is like really into the code and won't won't realize that his battery is running low unless he has this indicator. Um, so you can have you can have left and right prompts. You can also have multiple lines of prompts, which I believe you can do in Bash too. So um, so that's kind of cool. It's something to aspire to. I haven't gotten to that level yet, but um, if I ever become that unconscious that I don't know what my battery level is, then I'll definitely try to integrate that. Um, so if you for some reason want to uninstall it, it's pretty easy as well. But uh, it'll be sad. And uh, so, based on all that, your mission is to, you know, if you want to do this, just install it. You can clone a dot file that I have up there on GitHub, and you can change your shell to this and you know, start start running with it. You can always change it back. Um, so I think that's all I had. Uh, you guys have any other questions or comments or anything? That last elaborate prompt, uh, Tim Harvey has something similar like that in his uh, bash config, which should be on his GitHub. Cool. All right. Did I check it battery? <laughs> I don't think it checks his battery, but it battery definitely has a lot of git status C type things. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I think it's really good. Did your last name end with an A or no? What's that? Did your last name end with an A or no? No. So this is like uh, just a username thing. So this is Anthony. It's only six letters of the last name. Uh, yeah. That's why I can never remember whether you were Panago or Panaza. That makes sense. That. that makes sense. It's poor branding on my part. <laughs> <laughs> so. so if if you want, there is a, uh, um, I don't know, a project called Oh My ZSH on GitHub. Right. That's like a ton of... Uh, default ZSH stuff. Basically, you can use this oh my ZSH and get kind of awesome ZSH defaults up and running quickly. And then you can be like me and not really know anything about ZSH, except for global aliases. That's the only thing I know. That way, when someone goes, well, what do I get You know that I can't get in Bash? I'd be like, global aliases, and then the <laughs> argument's over. <laughs> so. I found the, the dot files org. If you're just looking to peruse random dot files, are really handy as well. You'll see a lot of cool stuff in there, like 400 line, you know, bash dot rc or dot bash rc files. So it's kind of exciting, <laughs> kind of. 400. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. 400. Yeah. So let's take a look. Sorry, I didn't mean to steal no, your thunder. I didn't realize you were already. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So, it. thanks for your attention and your questions. I appreciate it.